but online, it has been a very close matchup recently. So let's see how it transpires. We've got Saw, of course, starting on the CT side. And let's see how it pans out. Pistol round underway. Maka has the molly and the smoke. And of course, as Saw, we all know, love their double duelies on Ujerx and Matiris. All right, a little bit of a fakie in towards B to accommodate this mid-split. Dulbaredes go forward, but Jocko finds the first instantly. And now they're out for blood, straight over the top of construction. It's all 3D Max. They've got B for free. And that should be pissed around, done and dusted. So will probably just be looking to either save their Kevlar, maybe get that 350 helmet upgrade for a force buy in the following round, or just look for some kill bonuses. And it looks like that's what Ujerks is definitely doing. But that is a lovely swing from Jocko. I've uh, covered Jocko many a time on Vertigo. Back in the old days, the double pony days, like I mentioned, of course, he can put up some great numbers on this map and can be very explosive. That's what we're going to be looking for with 3D Max today. They, of course, Vertigo does kind of lean to a, a sort of pack-based mentality in a way, especially on the T side, taking ramp as such. And uh, we'll see if they can keep that up on the gun rounds rather than just the pistol. They'll clean up Roman nicely. And that's the first round of Pro League for 3D Max. Yeah, not, not a bad round at all. I like the fact that they've actually thrown the grenades quite shallow, and then it completely kind of creates an illusion of how, well, how many players are actually scaling up the stairs. In fact, it's just a couple, and then all the distraction is taken from mid. It's a well-choreographed pistol. 3D Max have been workshopping that one before the event. Roman tries his best, but it's only in consolation. And a oh, force by here for Saw. They're going to throw the MP9s at this, and Gravity's going to get a little bit of a vibe check up towards A. That's interesting. Of course, usually kind of meta kind of dictates very often. It's an eco in these sort of rounds for a CT side, especially on Vertigo. But you know what? They got themselves a two for two early on. MP9 frags will come in for Story and New Jerks. And of course, that is important cash for the future rounds too. Even if they don't win this one and they're actually going for a double gap aggression here very common strategy on ct vertigo to try and get at least a trade frag and maka he's pushed up so far of course so aren't necessarily gonna know that he's already up past the boxes here just posturing looking toward elevators story will now give it a glance but the timing doesn't work out for him and they don't see it a boost up on double stack now that's interesting lucky's still holding for the possibility of players pushing down and he takes story but is he aware of a second mutiris will not swing for now as a bomb plant comes through they won't be aware he's here He's so worried, though, about Lucky on the flank. So Orostos needs to take the first contact, and he gets domed instantly. And now Materius' position, whilst it's good for the first, he gets immediately traded out. I really like that pacing from 3D Max, because they yeah. the space initially, and then they slow things right down. When it goes into a three-on-three, -three, they make Saw doubt. And just by taking the space and contact pushing up towards this site, you're still imposing a lot of question marks in this CT side. Have they fully committed up to the bomb site? Have they actually rotated away? We haven't heard anything and that's what initiates his contact from story to walk down ramp he needs to see what's going on there he gets met with an ak headshot and it's just a very clean mid round from 3d max yeah, really important on a against a force by such as that right so often the force by can come up trumps and the force by wars will then begin until someone wins two rounds in a row of course and in the following, of course, Gravity with that MAC-10. A little bit of confidence, perhaps, for Gravity. As I mentioned, of course, for those of you maybe who weren't here for the pregame, and he is fourth LAN in his entire career. And, of course, those first three were all just regional French LANs. Nothing as significant as this. And he's getting some ecos. Early doors will definitely help him feel it a bit. And it's nice to obviously get that pistol, get that lead, and allow those players with slightly less experience to slot feel slightly more confident of course and that's a clean anti-eco uh, and this is also the decision as well look remember this is Saw's map pick 3d max elected to start on the t side they wanted to set the pace early they wanted to hit yes. the ground running and just make saw feel really uncomfortable and obviously we're going to get a full taster of what's to come in the first full gun round but MR12 in CS2 is a snowball effect. You win the pistol, suddenly you've dealt with a four spy. It's now a tactical for Saw. They're already feeling the burden of losing three rounds immediately, which is a lot more significant than it was in Go. Exactly. 
We saw Rowan before the game, looking at maybe a little bit chilly in the basement, like we said. He's got the, uh, the hand warmers there in action. Apparently, uh, according to some of our lovely production help that we spoke to the other day, it's actually quite chilly in Malta, so yeah, important to keep warm, keep those reactions as fast as possible. Basement Dweller, of course, the, the new collab <laughs> for the ESL machine. Shout out, yes. Alex. Looking forward to seeing what that looks like. I've not had a sneak preview, so I'm in the same boat as all of you guys, don't worry. It's good. <laughs> I'll believe. The leaks. It looks great. Okay. okay. I'll believe you. You would never lie to me, so I wouldn't. <laughs> Opening gun round underway. Exercise priming the molly. This is, a, I believe, a jump throw that bounces off the window and go to, goes toward gap, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, you're right. There it is. Of course, Saw will be very aware of where that utility is coming from. Because now they'll creep up with these smokes to cover them. He jerks on the angle. Jocko has decent timing here, but will reveal his position. We're throwing that Molotov to clear out sandbags. And actually, they have kind of taken rap, and Jocko's kind of done it alone in a weird way as well. With that utility help, of course, from, from Ladder. It's allowed them to shift back toward B stairs. It was Stories brought his AWP over as well, so uh, has got to be a little bit careful here with Lucky about to be boosted on Gravity's head. Story just in the nick of time. And now we can look for even more on these stairs. Utility raining out, 35 seconds. This has to be the commitment from 3D Max, or does it? They've pulled rotates, and with Jocko's previous space on ramp, they're trying to exploit A, but they're being so loud about this that Saw haven't really had to move too much. Yeah, I mean, Jocko took the space, but then fell back with his teammates, right? They've changed plan. If they just straight up win the duels, it doesn't matter. Matur is looking a little bit cold, early doors. And Roman fighting for his life, two versus two. But Aros Doss is still here. 1v1. Story, who was originally on B, is now on A. Bomb plant in the smoke, and Story finds it with the sidearm. Saw, get off the mark in Pro League. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though, the amount of rotations that immediately come over, and what's really cool is just the little traps that Saw set up in, in that exchange. Arostos tucked in the corner. There's a player pushing beyond default. I think it was Roman that was just making sure that he was taking all of this space and all of the distraction. They were trying to set each other up for success. Let's be honest, the gunfights didn't go in favor of them as it felt, felt like it really should have. 3D Max do really well to kind of crack open that bomb site and bring it down to a bare bones one-on-one. One and his story on the Yorp, you don't think he's swapping to that pistol. It works out quite favorably. Round on the board for Saw, but that was really expensive. Of course, surviving with just one player alive means three MP9s in the following gun round. That's probably why they're trying to fight fire with fire here. Quite literally, with the Molotovs pushing down aggressively with some SMGs. With those SMGs, I should say, and yeah, gravity. Still providing some pre presence over toward B stairs. Actually, the defense on B is two of those MP9s right now. So little do 3D Max know. We could have an advantage if they were to execute there. But, of course, we have the X-ray and they don't. So we're going back toward ramp and that's where Story's posted up. Yeah, but if he gets removed here, then it gets a little bit tricky because this is like your MVP weapon and falls for the bait. Nice little run boost over. Story gets legs as a response, and now suddenly 3D Max spring into action. Immediate scaling up this ramp, but they've got two flashes to get them in. So after part, utility is not great, but at the same time, weaponry doesn't really favor Saw. They're trying to deny the bomb at every single circumstance. 30 seconds, exercise finds the AWP. That's huge because now Gravity can stick the digits. Yeah, on low HP as well, just about getting away with it. He might just have to stay on default, to be honest. The MP9 will have so many bullets firing through. Maka in a very powerful position toward the sandbags with the AWP, but the SMGs are running riot. And they're having to win these pure angels because, of course, Saw have no utility in this one. It might give Lucky a chance or exercise. The answer's no. Defuse will come through and Saw get their second. Yeah, and that's that's two things there for, for 3D Max. Uh, and the... 
Saw handle that really well because they know they've got the lesser weaponry. So what they want to do is just make sure that 3D Max can't get established into these after plants. They can't get set up in the crossfires. Uh, gravity's isolated on that bomb site immediately. So the SMGs chase them down close quarters. They're always going to have the jump, especially with the numbers. And the difficulty is where you haven't got much utility for 3D Max. They feel like they need to take all of these aim fights, but they're constantly swinging into two or more players. It's so uncomfy for that after plant. So it's a really good response and really good pacing on that retake from Saw because if they allow 3D Max maybe five seconds, suddenly it's crossfires and it's a whole different round. Oh, Roman needs to be careful. Pistols are up very fast toward ramp, faster than he was expecting. Thankfully, story is there. And yeah, I mean, as he so rightly pointed out, Vertigo, even when you are in a disadvantageous situation, if you've got the utility to get the nades down on the A site, you can lock off that CT retake. Make it very difficult for them to recover. So good job to sort of take that one. Just Tech 9, Glock, and two P250s for 3D Max left in this one. Saw should be evening it up at three apiece. And it's a good sign for the series that we're going to get a close game. This is how it's begun. Sometimes, obviously, first games of a LAN of a season of Pro League can be a little bit of a, uh, a damp squib, I guess you could call it. But I want to see a brawl. The maps kind of lead toward the possibility of that as well, with the styles of these two teams. I want to see a close game. I want to see a fun battle. Let's see if Saw can take a round here, all five alive. Actually important to do that in a round such as this, with their economy being as it is. One kill for exercise. And that is all they will get. Nicely done by you, Jax. Yeah, you spoke about just sort of the the need to get off the... Like, hit the ground running and kind of get off the mark as soon as possible. Uh, I think that's a perfect time to kind of segue into talk about the format. Obviously, it was introduced uh, last season, but there's a lot more chances now. You fall into a mid-bracket and then a lower bracket, and then teams four to eight will compete in the last chance uh, where there's smaller groups and then the first placed finished team in each of those groups will qualify through to the playoffs which means that there's a lot of counter strike to keep you updated with there's a lot of teams yes. that are just going to float through sort of the the arena in malta for the next three weeks but also it provides ample opportunity so even if you don't quite make it in that first game, you still got plenty of chances to try and uh, just test your luck uh, and see how you how you fare. It's not the be all and end all if you do lose this opening game, I think is the, the highlight. But at the same time, it's way easier if you just win it. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong on that one. That's, uh, yeah, so as I said, it's an interesting format and it kind of shortened, of course, from last season as well, like you said. So teams at once, two groups at once as well. Oh, gravity, upcoming gun round. Taking matters into his own hands there. Straight up ramp, Roman was in the midst of just jump spotting, thinking it would be a slower play, and the answer's no on that one. Gravity takes that kill, they can now deploy the utility. You just play up close on the crane, maybe waiting for a flash to come through, but he's slightly blind as well, and he can't recover. Jocko takes the headshot, down to five HP himself though. And even though 3D Max have a five versus three, there is some significant damage here. There is, but they're immediately resetting. They don't want anything more to do with A. They assume the rotations are going to come over. So instead, they've got enough utility to be able to execute the B bomb site. They're also just waiting patiently just in case Saw have a reaction of their own. And sometimes you need to go searching for clues in these three on fives. So by spreading out a little bit thin, it works to a detriment for Saw, but it's also just a positive for 3D Max. Because at the bare minimum, you get info if you fall without a kill, or you're even more likely to reduce the numbers further. That bomb has not moved in the last 20 seconds. Yeah, I know there's only 30 of those seconds remaining. Oh, Muteris tried to put himself up close, but Lucky checks his basis. That's exactly what you should be doing. It may just look like a random wall bang, but you've got to make sure you cover those eventualities. And 3D Max are doing a pretty good job here of sort of faking back and forth pretty much, keeping sort of guessing, right? 
Yeah, it's been it's been really cool to see the design in these rounds, and they're, they're really playing really aggressive in the early stages of the game. They're taking this ramp control just away from Saw and limiting map control. At the same time, you've got these extremity lurkers that are just holding very passively in case Saw forced the issue. And I feel like Saw gonna ha is going to have to start responding and doing something of that kill in the next couple of rounds because you can't give this much space over to a team like 3D Max because... As you've already seen, they will fake on you. They will keep you guessing. And they will use all of the clock and use it as a burden against Saw. So there's a lot of moving pieces that are going on. But ultimately, 3D Max are just trying to provide the best outlet for them to construct these rounds and get them in their favor. Yeah, and it's a good sign for 3D Max as well that Gravity seems to be starting pretty confidently as well. Happy to be the point man up ramp. So often you need a player like that, of course. Happy to take these duels straight up. Most famously at the Paris Major, of course, it was Cypher just doing that over and over again. It's kind of a roll, of course. We know the entry roll exists, but on Vertigo there is a just, you know, run up ramp roll very often in these sort of rounds. Round eight. Lucky up close and Gravity's done it again. Arosdos taken down with the spam through the corner of the smoke. I reckon he probably saw a corner of him there. As he tried to advance further forward, Story may be here to hold them at bay with a smoke and, of course, his AWP, but... Maybe Max are getting a lot of entries right now. Yeah, Gravity's always been that player, especially like LDLC days. He mm. was getting a lot of freedom um, under sort of the, the leadership of Amanek as well. You think this guy's 20 years old, he's playing with like Lucky, Jocko... And then, obviously, Amanek. Like, he's got a storied career already, and he, he's so young. But I feel like the, the benefit of having a player like Gravity is he is very smart and cerebral in the mid-round. Like, he'll create a lot of opportunity. Here is Saw poking and prodding, by the way, in towards mid. And this is exactly what Exercise is holding for. Mutirius, if he goes around that corner, he's probably a dead man walking. Might even swing. Now he's seen the nades fall out from exercise and in fact the oh. fight comes straight to him but flash catches him right at the last moment 3d max yet again opposing problems on two sides of the map yeah so many occasions we see that ct side go aggressive like you say while they're throwing utility and maybe a little bit of early bo3 early tournament nerves there for materials and from saw as a whole it feels like and that sort of situation so often maybe you'd see materials be the player pushing forward Taking the initiative, not letting 3D Max peak him, not letting Exercise take that point first. And he'll not be able to connect on the M4 spray. Gravity with two, Exercise with his kill, like we saw, and Lucky with one more as well. And Story, well, absolutely no doubt with the economic situation on 3D Max, they can afford to throw one or two players here on the hunt and remove that up from the equation. Not happening. It's a case of, again, prioritizing your finances over your oppositions. They keep an AWP, but ultimately, 3D Max know that Saw haven't got the best buy behind it. So as soon as you find and isolate this AWP, you just can reposition to the other bomb site. This is the opener from Exercise yes. onto Mutiris in middle. And from here, it just feels like none of the gunfights go Saw's way. Even this one here, with Lucky finding Roman, that's an adjustment, not looking towards gap whatsoever. Had a cursory glance, was able to adjust in time. And straight back to the original scene of the crime where Gravity found the opener in the last round. Story gets mollied off from Gap. 3D Max won't be again. Yeah, this is a, a really confident T-side start from 3D Max. And perhaps why they chose it, as you rightly pointed out. The OSPs to face. Aras Doss is not long for this world. There goes Materius as well. Lucky takes that one. A lot of people may remember Lucky, of course, from you know, his G2 era when they both actually, him and Jax, got picked up from 3D Max, if I'm not mistaken, from memory. And uh, yeah, of course, kind of spent quite a long time on that G2 back in, the, in that era. And the end of his stint, he was quite heavily criticized. But on this roster, he's been putting in some good performances, online at least. It's a whole different beast. In Malta. Story, really trying his best, but that's actually the AWP lost. So, 
Roman is not in a position to go and collect that. I'm sure Story would have preferred to save. I'm pretty sure Arrows Dust could drop him one anyway, but still. That second shot was just so gross <laughs> from Maka. <Mac. laughs> like, the, the first one was a little bit laboured. You think, okay, well, look, he's killed people. That's fantastic. It just one-taps the guy on sight. Like, okay, mate, you need to do that. That's not fair. You're already beating them 6-3. You don't need to style on them. This is what I'm talking about, right? Ready for this? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, just jiggling with the sandbags. My man's got a USB. Come on, give him a chance. But that's not how things work. No mercy for 3D Max in the early stages. And it's good to see Maka playing well as well, of course, as the leader of this roster. I don't to go if... If I'm right and thinking on oh, 3D yes, Max, L Lucky's had a little bit of a stint at the reins. Maka as well. I don't think Jocko's ever called, but I guess he doesn't uh -oh. need to when there's so many players that are just contributing ideas. Fun push for Saw. Immediately aggressive, and that accelerates the play in towards mid. Straight into the crossroad, Mutiris' story, but they get one apiece. Be bomb site. It's open for now, but Jerks is already on the flank, being held by Lucky. But is he ready for Roman as well? Yes, he is. Doesn't need to commit wow. to the fight, but he wins it out anyway. That's so impressive from Lucky. Just talking him up, and he delivers. Not just taking the first flanker, but the second as well. A huge individual play in this round to make it a lot more comfortable for 3D Max. Story tried to get into the action, playing in mid as he did, got his one, but and pushing further through would just be way too difficult for him. The pounce from 3D Max was wonderful. Seven three now on this T side already, and money still continues to be an ever-growing problem for Saul. If they're not careful, this could end up as nine three. And that would be a disaster, considering that this is their map pick. You've got Inferno coming up next, which is a very strong map historically for 3D Max as well. And when Lucky and just the rest of the gang are hitting shots like this, there's some rounds that you can just put your hands up and think, well, what can I realistically do differently? I'm just being absolutely blasted out the server. Yeah, this is very clean. Very clean from 3D Max so far. Of course, of main full French rosters, of course. Kind of uh, one of the last hopes, sadly. I'm sure there'll be uh, a lot of viewers really pulling for them to make a name for themselves once again. So already have mentioned, of course, in the opening stage of the major. Their twos are up, won their two beer ones. Had those three matches against Cloud9, who they'd already beat you know, a few weeks beforehand. Pain and Furia, all rosters, which they would have thought they had a good chance of beating, and they all lost 2-0 uh, to every single one of them. So that's an interesting fight. Materis just running in toward Ladder, almost catching Exercise, who was looking to try and take control in a T default position around that area, but gets forced away. Yeah, the, him breaking his legs, falling down that ladder, actually did more damage than the MP9. Got a little <laughs> boost, the story. Got a little nosy in towards B stairs. However, Lucky's already under here. Just becoming a, a little bit of a nuisance. Back to mid, potentially. Exercise just guts out ladder, just in case that MP9 of Mutiris has pushed forward a little bit further. And instead, he's tucked behind the sandbags. Hmm. This is going to be tough for Materis. Gets one, and the trade isn't instant from gravity as Materis ducks back behind his position. So that's pretty important for Saw. Sure, it's a, a half investment with that AWP. But these, these are the sort of rounds that can be so important to win. And if Saw actually can get out of this half somehow with a 7-5... I think they'll be relatively delighted, to be honest, because they've been relatively outplayed overall. That push again. Yeah, I don't know if I like this with 25 seconds, though, because you've just given out an opener. Now Jerks has to hit some bangers with the Deagle. He'll fall back away towards Sandbags at the bare minimum, and Jocko won't really have time to clear this. Orb, far, Jerks strikes from Sandbags. Suddenly, it's a two on four, and Mac is also overwhelmed. You Jerks have done absolutely everything in this round. Keep Saw alive.
And that is now the prospect of a 7-5 half. Wow, I mean, that situation there for you, Jerks, logic dictates. He falls back to the site, right? He falls back to the near double stack area, maybe Crane. We already saw Roman position there anyway. Kind of fakes the footsteps for a second, manages to jump and silently, uh, even though he made some noise originally, kind of get into the sandbags position, not where they expected him to rotate back to, especially such late round, right? He does it all. Look at these clean shots. That's what we've come to expect from you, Jerks, on this roster over the last few months. Yeah, also, a lifeline for Saw. you speak about for the win and their run they went on, obviously the core of a Rostos story, Jerks, when they went through conference in 2022. That all came off the back of Jerks having some insane performances on Vertigo, especially on that T side. So if you get a little bit of a buffer here for Saw, then there's definitely a lot to work with. Resmoke over towards Gap, but Maka on the angle deals with Story in towards Elevator. And that's his bell rung immediately. A lot more faster scaling up towards A and exercise. This creates a lovely little window for him to strike in mid. Ah, the vertigo mid lurk. A bane of many a CT side. Are they going to consider it? Roman certainly not. He's flashing himself through the elevator smoke. Exercise could have two kills on his plate here. How does he play it? There's one. Instantly taken. Doesn't play trigger discipline, but it doesn't matter because it allows his teammates to work their way up. Mutiris tries to fight for his life, though. Does really well to get two. Unfortunately, it could be in vain. Aaron's Doss is one versus three. The spam through heaven and he gets taken out. Very comfortable first half of Pro League for 3D Max. They'll take it eight to four. Is it tough, you know, when you have to play so many qualifiers and you have to grind out so many games and you guys have had a couple of unfortunate ones when you're maybe a game or two away for, from making it? How hard it is to just keep that morale up and, and, and keep the grind? Uh, there's so many tournaments, so like you step back a bit and you just uh, see there's other tournaments coming. So it's hard to deal on the, when you lose, but uh, the other day you just reset and you go back, uh, you come back uh, stronger. We also hear from players talk a lot about, you know, tier two teams or tier three teams. They play sometimes weird Counter-Strike and online Counter-Strike is, is, is not real. So are you happy to play your LAN against some better teams and show your level in this environment? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it's, it's, what, it's why we play for, so for sure. And tell me a little bit about Gravity. He's uh, the newer name, you know, that yeah. people might not be as as familiar with. So what's he like? Where did he come from? In the French scene, the people know him because uh, he's been grinding like in two, three years, like pretty fast. Uh, he was uh, the IGL in the past for his teams. And he has like a big, big uh, mindset, like a good mindset. Has a lot of energy to give. So, you know, with Vitality obviously going international uh, a while back and anything. Uh, do you see any opportunity for a resurgence of the French scene? Is, is there more players now in CS2? Are some of the guys from Valorant coming back as well? Like, do you see uh, a chance for it to grow a little bit more? Uh, I think so. We just need to wait a little bit and uh, just wait for French Rock to come in, in the scene, like maybe next year. And uh, I'm pretty sure if, uh, if we show how, how we can play in French CS, I'm pretty sure uh, new talents will come. All right. Best of luck, man. Looking forward to watching your games. Thank you for your time.
A4 half then for 3D Max on Saw's map pick, and it was just the assertiveness that I was the most impressed with. We saw glimpses from Saw of the individuals that can potentially take over and control a game, but that needs to begin now. A very crucial pistol about yes, to sir. Uh, Yes, sir. And obviously, I think 3D Max will be delighted. They're without a doubt the underdogs coming into this one, and they are in a superb position right now. Saw looking a little bit under pressure. I mentioned, of course, Saw. They are a team that has always loved Vertigo since the very time it was released all those years ago. So let's see what they can do. Actually, we're going very fast. And hang on a second. The Dollies are in play. Exercise is out for blood. He even leaps in for a fourth. Goodness me. No holds barred on that one. <laughs> that WWE. He's just trying to choke slam him from the top rope. Shadow spotted as well for Jocko. Mutiris is now in a world of pain. Needs to find this kill, but can't get past Jocko. Story, last player standing against four. Good collection on the first, but actually might be allowed a little bit of space here. Bomb plant, nearly a guarantee, although gravity has already rotated forward. We'll stick the digits. So that's uh, money made at least. And now he can go anywhere. But Imaka on the flank, he feels like he needs to take the fight to Elevator. Immediate trade out. The youngster, the new kid on the block, has sealed yeah, the deal for 3D nice. Max. Uh, from 3D Max. Critical pistol, as you said. And incredible work from Exercise. So often we see the Dooley's multi-frag on the pistols here. Replay of it here. Judging the recoil really nicely. And as you see, he was very happy just to say, well... I've done my job now. I'm going to go looking for more. Jocko pushed aggressively down ramp. As you rightly said, playing with probably what is the biggest shadow advantage in, get in the game right now. I mean, it's ridiculous how long that shadow is when you walk over the bottom of the A ramp. Great there. And uh, 3D Max with a great start. 3M4s on the next round, of course. It was a bomb plant to come through. So Saw, their force is decent. Two Galils, AK, Tech 9, Mac 10. Lucky with an XM as well for 3D Max. <laughs> Naughty man. Best gun in the game, man. You not heard? True. You have heard. <laughs> True. It, especially especially yes. in Gap, to be fair. It's better than the Mag 7, which can either be a killing machine or, in my experience, yeah. it's 13 in 1. Yeah. I did 9 in 1 the other day. That was just that. fantastic. Although, hang on. Fast up A, Jocko overwhelmed, and the XM also dealt with by a Tech 9. Saw, so they've got their way in, they've got the plant, and Gravity also dealt with. Gun barrel spotted, Jerks was out for blood. He wants even more, and he'll find it. Exercise, who's the hero of the pistol, is now diminished to zero as he watches on as the rest of his team crumbles. Very nice from Saw. And, and weirdly, right, despite losing the pistol, now they've somewhat put themselves into an even better position, it feels like. They're going to limit 3D Max, of course. You'd expect 3D Max to reforce into this. The meta dictating the Force by Wars to commence. So, yeah, very interesting. So I'll have a lifeline and a great opportunity. And Randall will even remove the M4 from the equation too. So there we, know, there we go. We know it's double eco territory. If uh, they overcome this Force by saw could be within touching distance a lot quicker than 3d max would have wanted yeah it's a really important round now oh, look at how many times in one round is a gun barrel <laughs> going to be spotted it's just the little tricky silencer just poking its head around the corner there are the deeks no shotguns in sight. In fact, it's Jocko with his hand cannon. He's seen Roman immediately. Info goes both ways, and there is the XM. We'll find exercise. That's a, a nasty feeling. Although, Bucky does go one for one. Not bad. Actually, surprised that they haven't gone for the full investment. As I said, I mean, every single game you kind of see these days, Force by Wars would kind of go immediately after that hit back from Saw and I guess Maka is thinking maybe he wants to CT side orb as quickly as possible. Jerks will find Jocko comfortably. Bomb will be planted on the corner of the site. Gravity has a chance of the wall bang, getting very close. But the wall bang or smoke bang doesn't come through. And now 
saw on six is imminent. I've got to say, respect to uh, Arasdos for keeping the XM from the CT side over to the T side. I think a T side XM is a little bit more unusual, but of course he switched to the M4 now, so it's a smart play long term. Yeah, now you're chilling if you saw. Like, sure, work to be done, but at the same time, that was the kind of half force. Uh, it was Deagles. This one will definitely be an eco. So now suddenly you're at, you're at nine seven, uh, barring a calamitous sort of exchange to go down. Barring the USPs don't win a full eco. To <laughs> get the XM really. Would have given him more bonus cash. That's for sure. If we got a second kill. Yeah, now I see cleaned up from sort sort of stabilizer they needed. If, if 3D Max had converted the second round, maybe even converted a bonus buy already as well, maybe we would have been talking about this map being over already. Not just yet. 3D Max are committing to that double eco without having, of course, a force on the previous. Fun flash being lined up as well. That's the one at home. You see the Jocko's lining it up over at default. And the flash player's in gap. Meanwhile, execute for B. Taking shape for Saw. Only one player over here at the moment. And then suddenly, these pistols go searching. They go straight into the Galil Jerks. Hardly tapping away. Maka with the Deagle. Do anything with this? No, he Jerks keeps himself planted on the angle. Jocko will get taken down too. It's just lucky. Very tough angle to finish a player off in that one. And he will find it with the deagle as Lucky swings further wide. Jerks is farming a little bit on the T side. Of course, it's only Ecos, but good for the confidence, good for yep. the rating. He's up to 17. That's him. This is what he does, by the way. This is something you're going to see all T side long from Jerks. It's control over towards ramp and gap, yep. primarily gap. Uh, and I don't know what it is, but this guy just wins basically like 80% of his angels over here. That stat's made up, but that's what it feels like, guys. I'm sorry. I haven't got my calculator out, but you, you understand, right? It's for, it's for effect, but it, it honestly feels like it at times. This guy's clean. And then this story starts getting online as well. That's where you got to start to worry if you're 3D Max. Not wrong. Of course... Money they've built up in those in that little streak of you know two or three rounds from Saw instantly puts them in a really good position. They've got this full investment coming through with still some of the saved M4s from that second round from 3D Max. Mac is on his AWP now though. What can he do? Not a lot right now. No one's really giving face to a fight. It's just uh, an early exchange of utility. It's the good old war of attrition where it comes to nades. Jocko jumping, hopeful to see anyone. But that's currently not going to be the case. Still good map control, though, from 3D Max. Jerks now starts to get a little bit interested. The investment in towards a ramp is becoming a little bit more problematic now for 3D Max because as his utility is about to be dropped, you jerks might swing oh, and Jocko dealt so with. Frustrating for Jocko. Need a great performance now from Lucky, but the flash comes through. Tries to escape toward Gap. It's not a safe place to be and Maka might have to fight through the fire and flames to return this one. But then the black part of the scope, of course, unsighted. Doesn't see that Story's already on his left. Two versus three. Sure, there might be a smoke kit on exercise, but you need to find a kill within the next, I don't know, like 10, 15 seconds if you're ever going to consider this one. If everyone finds this frag on toward exercise, it should be enough. They try and stop the AWP from being saved and Story deals with it beautifully. And guess what? We mentioned the amount of cash that Saw had built up. Well, he's just added to that because his up AWP upgrade, if he keeps it, as we have a look on the right-hand side of the screen, would have been free. Yeah, true. But he has swapped back to the M4. I wonder what the plan is behind that one. Maybe they're confident, Brandon, with uh, a rifle set up on the T side. 
I think it's also just uh, a question of the, the pace of the rounds that's coming out from them. If you have an AWP, it really incentivizes you mm. to be a lot more slower, a lot more methodical. And if you notice the nature of a lot of these rounds that Saw are, are employing, it's very much explosive, catching the opponents off guard, which doesn't really lend stylistically to having an AWP in the mix because Story will always be that little bit further behind. And when he's hitting headshots like this, keep him on the AK. He can be that pack player. Exactly. As you can see, he, uh, having a good map thus far. Gravity, oh, I like this. He's got the rifle in play. The M4A4 trying to fight. Actually, to be fair, he does really well to hit a dink on story. That activates the pistols to rush down for the trade. So on this low investment, Jocko's recovered the M4. He's got Kevlar in this round. Even though Materius is in a really strong position here as they work their way through mid with Roman. The two veterans of Saw. The chance they could do something if they fight together. And in comes Jocko. Just two left for Saw. What a round this would be for 3D Max to win. Sees them pop out mid behind the smokes. Jocko trying to fight for his life. And the bullets though, and that smoke's about to be blown open. Roman, oh, does he see the USP on his left? He's fighting between two players, and he gifts Jocko a duel. It activates him to spray for more, and that is a massive quad kill for the French side. Yeah, that's one for one. When you take a look at sort of the pistol rounds being translated here on CT side. Saw had one towards the tail end of the first half, and now we get another. This gets all set up by gravity. As you mentioned, that dink on towards Story, and <laughs> just a wild kill from Jocko. But from there, he can get the rifle, scavenge it, move over towards elevators. Saw are trapped, and they have to fight their way out of a corner. But there are too many angles to deal with. But Jocko does absolutely everything. Four in the round for him. Saw not step back to square one they've got more than enough money but it might reevaluate where yeah, they want to go actually are choosing now despite the fact story threw it away of course in that previous round maybe they'll try something different in terms of the t strategy they've bought up the orpon story and funnily enough it looks like pretty max actually won't have one to fight it this time but what a round from jocko i call that his name before this map started before this series began it's a name that could do a lot of work on Vertigo and has done a lot of work for on Vertigo for this roster, dating back to the Double Pony days. As you said, set up by gravity, but once Jocko got his hands on that A4, he put it to superb use. There's a wild disparity as well between just the openings that for example, story will go for on the CT side compared to the attack. It's all led by jerks predominantly on this attack. Uh, and story will be there just to back him up and try and guarantee the trade. Fun angle from Jocko, just by 51, waiting for the fade. And again, timing just eludes sore. I'm getting into the nitty gritty of the opening map of Pro League on the B stream right now. If Saw could fight their way back to a win after being 8-4 down at the half, that would be incredible for them. Oh, exercise to reveal his position. Wow, he does so well to get two still. And guess what? Mac has managed to take jerks as well. You mentioned he's the gap lurk, the gap aggressor. Well, he's been stopped this time. It's just Story and Roman remaining. They have a free-ish B site. The rotation is very quick here for 3D Max. There's a chance for a plant, but look at the utility that could come firing in. They've got a flash to play aggressive. They've got a nade to do that. It's blown open the smoke. Roman is 11 HP off the back of that. He does well to find a frag, but now his teammate has been taken down. Still fighting brilliantly. And pretty much need to be careful. They don't pick one by one here. It's been an expensive round. And in the end, Roman's efforts. It's a very nice try, but go unrewarded. 11 for the French side. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a really nice try from Roman, but that's all about the positioning there from 3D Max and how they've adjusted and what they're doing differently to what mm. Saw was doing on their defense is that they're taking space, but they're not overextending. Take a look at exercise position. Just playing on an off angle down below the stairs, that is something you don't pre-fire or pre-aim at all. If you're a T side, you normally look up high for like the close little headshot. Uh, angles. So XI is able to get two from that position, even though it looks like it, he mm. humbles the bag a little bit on that first shot. They're just not ready or prepared. So 3D Max are doing really good in taking space and then just leaving 
one or two extremity players, whilst having that free rifle to be a lot more flexible based on the reaction happening in real time. Exercise hollied oh. off initially, and that's a fantastic, fantastic angle from a Rostos. Yeah, tiny bit of an experience there from Gravity. It's the only sighting we've seen of that in the entire game so far. He's been really good on his Pro League Land debut, and Exercise, oh. no, he's fumbling with utility, trying to keep himself as safe as possible, but in doing that, does the complete opposite. Gets caught with his pants down, and now Lucky, exact same thing will happen to him. You jerks, what a second that is on Maka. The immediate hit back, Brandon. Uh, and that's the round. Yeah, it's just literally two entries on B that come from one player being caught out of position, I guess twice, because exercise is not ready for Arostos to be so close. There's that shadow again, Jocko just trying to hold on and do as much damage as possible. Ultimately, doesn't really matter now on the T side. They've built up a bank. So it's all bringing it back to, right into contention. 3D Max, their momentum stunted for now. Suddenly, we might see it slip the other way. And these cracks in the armor are beginning to show here for 3D Max. And with rounds coming really close and expensive, not sure how their finances are going to fare for the future. Situation now. Anyone's guess this map still. Actually, you mentioned the finances. I've just committed to a low investment, and this is something di different. Now, obviously, you I love it, but you move a I love bit, it. of course, being the third player on the totem pole. So he's having to look back and forth to keep himself alive. Oh. Actually does more damage, to be fair. Hits the dink, and it shouldn't be allowed to get away. Oh, my goodness. Arasdos fooning away there to keep himself alive. And once they've figured that out, obviously they know. Very unlikely for A to be significantly held. So straight into the bomb plot. And now Saw should be safe from the 3D Max cheekiness. Yeah, of course. Look, that, that is <laughs> now on the head. Cheeky, but also scary because in CS2, I feel like it's hard just to even get a kill on <laughs> one player's head, let alone two. So the fact that Jock has been able to find a dink in amongst all of that is a testament to his skill. But how a Rostos has got out of that alive, I will never know. Imagining the food music right now. I will oh, never know. Bunny heart. I don't mean, I'm pretty sure he was safe anyway, but the extra little bunny heart just to secure it was uh, pretty impressive. We're, what could have been actually in there for a bit of a weird unicorn round with all 10 players staying alive, but in the end, Aristos does meet his demise, but he's the only player to die. Damn, really in the business end of things now. And talking of the business end, we mentioned we'd give you an A stream update, of course. Well, Fnatic were 8 4 up on the CT side of Overpass at half. It's. Oh, yeah. 12 8 to VP now. Oh. I haven't won a single T round. How's uh, Papa Electronic? Electronic is currently 13 to 13. Confident. All right. Um, doesn't need to be the main point man on that roster necessarily. Just an extra insurance policy, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a really fun roster because it feels like James has kind of been obviously taking players and bringing them up in the tier two, tier three space. And now we finally see just sort of a investment from VP and going for just proven talent. And that just really bolsters their firepower. Um, we can gush all about VP all we want, but I want to focus in now on round 22 because it's a very important round. Story taking initiative, gets tagged by the Molly. In fact, that's Mutirius as well. And they got to fall back. Jerks is on four HP. Aye, aye, despite aye. grabbing the control. Um, yeah, can be a bit of a, a launch into the unknown when you put yourself in that position on this map, of course. But look at this little light around the smoke from Story. Oh, it was a chance at a second. Gravity trying to answer back. There are flashes in play. And Jerks will eventually get taken down. And what a reaction that is from Jocko Mitsuis. Probably should have got that kill. Arasdos fighting back, though. And he's managed to fall back. Can Roman get his kill in mid? No, he can't. Gets timinged on the swing by exercise. And 3D Max could be about to reach map point here. 20 kills on the board for Jocko. He's low HP, needs to make sure he gets away. Arasdos creeping up on his 19 HP, and there's the find. It's a headshot to boot, and it's a clean one versus one, but it's not clean for Arasdos because 
He's got not got much health to work with, and exercise is flanking, Brandon. It's a really fast flank as well. Orozzo's not going to be aware of it. You can see that he's clearing up towards CT and elevator. If he burrows his way in towards CT, then that makes things really difficult for Exercise. Jig, oh, spotted information, and now Rostos can creep even closer. Exercise throwing utility, but it's a Rostos with the shot. Four kills in the round for him. Saw equalized aye, 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 the now, That is line. one that shouldn't have been on the playbook for Saw. What a recovery from Arosdos, despite being so low. Again, an absolute kerfuffle toward Ramp. It goes the way of 3D Max, and then it's these two kills here. They do kind of peak one by one there, Gravity and Lucky. A slight, maybe, miscommunication on timings on that one. And Arasdos spots the utility being fired. Calm taps on the low HP, knowing that spraying there would not be the way to go. With half the body being covered, of course, by sandbags. That is a game-changing round from Arasdos and for Saw. And uh, now you force 3D Max all in. They're, they're not playing for overtime. They're playing for 13-11. They feel like they should be winning this map. Especially with the good work they put in on their own T side. Maka with the AWP. At least there's a couple of M4s in play, but a Famous and an MP9? It's not the greatest arsenal you'd want in a round like this. Of course, it's the equivalent of 14 all back in the global offensive days. And Maka oh, no. showed his presence, misses the shot down to 46. 3D Max looked in such a great position, but they could be about to get caught out again. New Jerks knows how to play with the gap angles. We all know it. This round, Jocko didn't. Great find. Maka is forced to smoke the molly as well. The rotations might be good toward A. New Jerks, the utility. Roman's nay deals with Maka in the end. Maka hasn't had a chance to get into this round at all. Tagged straight away, forced away, naded away. Story will find one more as well. Quick trade, and suddenly, out of nowhere, it's all down to gravity. I mean, I can just go B. Look, Arostos has just walked through that. Obviously deemed it clear. And uh, now he's in the back line. Is gravity faking that he's moved away just in case Jerks runs through the smokes? He's probably got an inkling that this bomb is now destined for the other site. He can win this kill and isolate fights. That's the way back in. Or he'll probably just save, to be honest. Find the AWP. There it is. Gravity is out of there, but that's Saw up to map wow. point. What a fight back from Saw. Incredibly impressed with their resilience on this one. Gravity trying to pick up as much as possible because they know they're going to be so limited economically in the next round. He's found a kit. He's found some utility. Every little helps in this scenario for 3D Max because Saw, in a harem scaring way, to be fair, they're going to reach map point first. Very important save at the bare minimum. It feels like gravity won't go down there. So that, that's an AWP guaranteed. But now 3D Max, as you mentioned, are fighting for their life on, here on Vertigo. Look at this opening kill. Like, the, the presence of mines that even pre-fired that angle. And it's because 3D Max have been throwing this smoke that I think was first showcased in I Am Sydney by Carrigan over towards the sandbag, but you can also throw it towards Gap where it lands on the girder uh, and spreads completely downwards, blocking off ramp. So he adjusts. Players can often hide behind it to try and get a little bit of an off angle, but not for jerks. He knows all too well how much utility has landed on Mutiris, by the way. There's so much going on. It's a Rostos that burns alive, and suddenly Mutiris, he's trapped in the corner. Down. And after the heroics he's been putting in in the last couple of rounds, maybe there's a chance for 3D Max to get to overtime here. Are we going to be double walking gap again? Mentioned how common it is, but they've been forced away by utility. Good timing on that from Saw. Damage done through yellow as well. Oh, they're both getting tagged up significantly, and that actually can make a big difference in the latter aspects of this round. Mac is in position, though. Doesn't matter when Story's here. What a clear and what a shot. Four versus four, minute to go. And you've still got players on extremities here, if you're saw. You do not need to commit in towards this A play. Mutiris is now gutting out B. We'll come toe-to-toe -to -toe with gravity. So it really depends on the outcome of that fight. But notice how he's already saying into the microphone, this could end B. You could walk back. 
Suddenly, information wow. goes both ways. Roman also gets a glimpse of the MP9s, and that's where they start to push in. That's the activation point. Jerks up high, and the bomb needs to be recovered and scarpered. 25 seconds. Materials is obviously in a fantastic position, but Gravity's come through. Story, a collateral, but through his teammate. Bomb Plum will come through toward A to win the game or send us to overtime. MP9 jumping through. Story finds one. It's very nervy now. Gravity, the new boy, pushing up close. Tech 9 is out and he finds it. Story couldn't complete the map and Gravity saves the day for 3D Max. What a round 24 that was. Blink and you miss it, right? I mean, instantaneously, Story has killed everyone <laughs> on the server bar Gravity. What is that lineup? We'll have to see it back on the replay because there's a lot of moving pieces here. Here's the initial volley of utility in towards B. Mutiris stays there the entire time. Oh. I feel like Maka shouldn't be losing that fight on Elevator and they just line up. Jerk strafes into the bullet. Wow. And Gravity cleans. Okay, 12-12. We really are back to CSGO days in the first CS2 LAN of ESL Pro League. We need 16. What a round. What a game. I'm glad. I mean, I said it when it was like 3-3. I'm glad it looks like it's going to be close. I'm glad it looks like it's going to be a brawl. Well, I promise you I don't have the scripts. What a game. And we're going to OT. And we're playing out OT right now. You jerks. Fighting in the smoke once again. Gravity, what a huge performance it's been actually in his first ever land, of course. Lots more viewers chiming in now. There's uh, some matches, of course, ending on other broadcasts, other uh, on the main broadcast, of course. Reminder, this is only his fourth land ever, Gravity. And his three lands before that were just regional French, French lands with mixed teams and LDLC back in the day. And he stepped up in what must have been an incredibly nerve-wracking situation. Can't imagine what his heart rate would have been like in that round in his first map of Pro League. Incredible stuff. Anyway, 50 seconds. The round at hand saw are working their way toward B, and they're just going to be flashing their way through. Generator is isolated. Arasdos looking to entry. Uh, I'll tell you why, it's not him, but he grabs the space and it forces exercise into the fight. Jocker can only go one for one. Suddenly, it's a four on three and the bomb already locked in. Gravity on the flank will deal with Mutiris and that's a threat in the back line suddenly Saw need to accommodate for. The answer for them is to push further forward in towards CT spawn. Maka looking over the wisps of the smoke oh. will find jerks and suddenly all the kills are coming through. Gravity with that backstab and it's an exceptional yeah, I mean, their health was low anyway. So actually, I thought they might have just won the duel straight up, but the insurance policy of gravity coming in on that flank so comfortable in the end for 3D Max, and it's funny, isn't it? It's funny. Now, rounds like that can look simple almost after it's been such a battle in regulation. That first kill from gravity there on Materius is actually such a critical one. I mean, you could have easily been taken down there by Saw's IGA come to fruition. But... That's for an alternate universe. This is the here and now. And 3D Max will be delighted just to settle themselves again, not just to get to over overtime, but to take the first round of it too. There's also a little bit of a bonus here as well for Gravity's flank, and that was he walked through middle in the mid round, but he didn't get spotted. So he can actually go for a very similar play and they can really run the same round back here for ED Max with that space being taken by gravity because Saw never spotted it. They saw he was on the flank, sure, but where on earth did he come from? Did he walk through A? Did he walk through mid and come through ladder? Did he walk through mid and go towards spawn? And suddenly there's so many different dynamics on it. But the point is he didn't get spotted initially. So gravity can look to take that space back again in this round. They might even do it with a double. Look at this. Maka leading with the AWP first, and then Gravity could go behind. It's being watched currently by Roman. Gravity will just cross the line. Roman's still looking for it, and that is a really important headshot. Gravity down. Playing a little bit more aggressive and be feeling like he can do so now after the confidence built up in the last couple of rounds. Gets humbled a little bit, and now Lucky, well, he's got a job to do. Jocko, he's mollied out of sandbags. Materis, 
We'll deal with him. Five versus three. Ujax on his way. And Jocko is more stuck than a stuck thing. Honestly, he has done incredibly well to get two on the spin. Actually, gives 3D Max a glimmer of hope here. Of course, they've got kits. They have one, what could be critical flashbang on Maka. But it's saw in a 3v2. Yeah, this this one's way more difficult. Way more difficult. Another re-smoke over towards the right-hand side of sight. Maka peeking over the top just to try and find anything. And Saw are going to give them absolutely nothing. Story holding on the angle. Maka will present himself in towards headshot. But time's running out, gents. You've ultimately got to give this a look in and really stick the bomb. And with Roman locking in that kill, sure, Maka gets a consolation prize, but it will be Saw locking in that round immediately. All level, once more, crisis averted on another retake. Inseparable, these two teams. Inseparable. We mentioned it would be a bit of a, a tier two brawl. Saw so kind of almost put themselves in tier 1.5 territory as of late. Maybe they deserve to be in that category already now, but you know what these teams at this level can do. So I'm all about land now, and they're trying to deal with it in a completely different scenario, different surroundings. And 3D Max, they once again try and send you jerks, do saw up toward ramp, past the angle. But a lot of uh, a lot of manpower there for the French side this time, and. The crossfire was too much for Ujax to handle. They completely destroy him. And lucky with that opening force, is saw back toward B. The timing on that smoke is impeccable from exercise. And this has been a very common theme for Saw. As soon as they lose players on A, they immediately reset. But the pacing of this is a lot faster. Arostos burning alive oh. to his own incendiary. That is so rough. But Roman is still carving out heads. Eviscerates this bomb site clean open. It's a yeah, three on three. Is, they must have taken the B bomb site though. Well, in a, what a weird situation. It could be very similar for 3D Max on the retake. Story and Materius now last alive. Neither of them above 40 HP. This HG is going to be solid. And there they go. Great retake from 3D Max. And in the end, Arrows Dos with a real 1G. Chat will enjoy that one. A bit of an error, sadly, for Saw. And it gives 3D Max a 2 1 in OT. Yeah, sweet right. He ever cooked himself for real. Like I, I, there were there was two instances of mollies there. I mean, one was on himself. The other one was actually a really well placed one uh, in the opening exchanges that was over towards 51, and that completely compromised Jerks and what he wanted to do. He wanted to walk through the gap smoke that 3D Max had constantly been putting down, uh, and then just try and fight them with flashes. Instead, he gets cooked, and then in mid movement gets dealt with by three players all staring at him. There's an old analogy in uh, in Formula One, uh, Brandon. Safety cars breed more safety right. cars because all the field gets bunched back up again and there's a chance for more incidents. Well, I kind of always have felt like two ones in overtime breed more two ones. And sometimes we could be here for uh, quite a long time. I'm here for it. I kind of hope we are because this has uh, been an exciting opening map of Pro League on the B stream. And now Saw over on the CT side. It's been a while since they're on CT. Of course. Yeah, and they've got to think back to what 3D Max were doing. And it was just consistent pressure all over the map, which means you don't need to rotate instantly if you see players scaling up towards ramp because it could never really be the, uh, the final concoction for 3D Max. They're just limit testing ramp right now, dropping early utility, keeping Saw cordon towards the top side of the ramp. That Miss Molly's a little bit of a flub. In fact, oh no, Lucky nearly committed a Rostos crime. Goodness me, that would have been wild if it was two in a row. God, I 
T boosted up in middle, looking for the AWP of Story. What a find. And there are so many players in mid from Matera spots in mid to try and trade that it's not possible for him to do any do anything. And Aras Doss standing up. Oh, he's got himself two. It was almost three. That pathing was so good from Aras Doss. He really tried his best on that one. Again, we have an afterplot on B. Again, we have low HP in play. This time it's the other way round. It's 3D Max. Walking wounded. Lucky one. Maka 51. Gravity 20. Of course, saw. They try their best on this one. They have an all important smoke for the plot. This could get weird and wacky now. Flash over the top. Superb. Sends Lucky in. Why not when he's 1 HP? It puts it all down to Roman. Is he just going to jump on the defuse? He is. He's holding it. Knives are out. They can't find him. Surely not. Oh, my word. Last second knife for Maka. You can see it in the player cam. Huge sigh of relief. And 3D Max get some map points. Can't believe this, really, because it felt like Arostos had done everything. There was two nades going into this retake as well for Saw, but they're slightly misplaced. No one from 3D Max occupies that space, but then it's just the proactiveness. These double flashbangs set up from stairs is everything. Roman gives it his best effort to oh. dealt with. France or London, 3D Max don't care. 15-13. As Roman Pierce just on the cusp at the edge of the molly. This is Saw's potential last stand. Two perfect rounds of CS. Otherwise, the map they battled so hard to get back in for eludes them oh, once more. Super aggressive. Oh, he's going to get swung on. You could see it coming, but of course he couldn't. Jocko will take that kill. Materis, the leader of Saw, fighting for his life. That's a great recovery kill. Yeah, it doesn't even take much damage at all. In fact, only one point of it. Sometimes Materis, even if he's had a poor game by his standards, of course, as the leader, does often take up the mantle and get really important kills for Saw at certain instances. This is a bit different for, different for 3D Max, though, Brandon. Three walking mid, two here to defend for Saw. No! Oh. Yeah. Just immediate, isn't it? Just an immediate decapitation. Uh, and suddenly you can feel the walls really closing in, especially with this util. Maka even goes through the smoke to confirm that Mutiris is a dead man walking. Roman, the only source of hope, and he gets mollied off the angle instantly. They need to join forces. Roman and Story need to come together and make the tether a bit tighter. As he peeks his way towards top headshot. It's Story that then hits the deck. Roman versus Free. He gives up his position with the incendiary. And another flashbang spells potential disaster here. 3D Max will just about lock in the map. It takes overtime here in Vertigo, but they do it. 16-13 on the 51 floors.